Is it worth waiting for the M3 MacBook Air or should you just buy an M1 or M2 MacBook Air for absolutely insane prices? I'm talking $750 for an M1 Air or $899 for a 13 inch M2 and $1050 for this 15 inch M2 Air, which I absolutely love. We have done a ton of testing on the new M3 chip, so I want to give you guys my honest feedback on the performance and if it's worth it depending on what you do. I want to start out with SSD speed because the M1 smokes the M2 and the M3 machines because those come with a single NAND if you have a 256 gig setup. And believe it or not, this can actually make a difference in real world use. And you can buy a discounted 16 gig, one terabyte 15 inch air right now for 250 off and that right there could make it also worth buying one right now. Now, as far as single core performance, the M3 chip definitely starts to take the lead. And when I use it, I do notice that it's a little bit snappier, but most people that are upgrading from an older Intel Mac or Windows machine will not notice. Even the M1 MacBook Air that's now three years old, um, that will be super fast. For multi-core CPU, we go from 8600 to 9700 and then 11,899 for the M3 chip. So that is 38% faster than the M1 and about 20 than the M2. Of course, this tests a wide variety of tasks, so we'll see how that affects real world usage. Now, as far as graphics, this is where it gets interesting because our M1 has a seven core, the M2s can come with an eight or a 10, and then we have a 10 for the M3. We see 25,000 for the M1, 39,000 for the M2 eight core, and then 47,000 for the M3. Now that is a really good spread there, but if you are buying a 15 inch, it automatically gets the best graphics. And then that jumps to 45,000, just slightly behind the new M3 chip. So the performance is practically the same. And if we look at graphics performance per dollar, the 15 inch M2 actually wins by a good margin. So when the M3 comes out for these MacBook Airs, you are gonna get similar performance, but you're not gonna get these insane sales. Now, even if you don't buy a new Mac, you need our sponsor's app, Clean My Mac X. When we clean up and refresh our offline spaces, like for example, our set here, it really brings positivity and gets you ready for work. And the same thing happens when you organize and refresh your online setup. You're just more motivated when you have a routine and your Mac is running great. Clean My Mac makes this easy and Smart Scan does three jobs with one click to clean up, protect, and speed up your Mac, all in just seconds while you're grabbing a coffee. I've used it for four years now because it is fast and easy, so I know my Mac is running its best, making me actually excited to jump into a new project. It's deleted a bunch of hidden junk files I couldn't find and has countless helpful tools and features. I use the memory free up button all the time, which is especially important for base spec Macs. Get your fresh start in 2024 with Clean My Mac X. Try it with a seven day free trial and use my promo code below to get up to five licenses with a 30% discount. Count. Now, when we look at gaming performance, the M3 does start to get a little bit more distance compared to the 10 core M2. And this is where I need to talk about throttling because unlike the 14 inch with the M3 that we were testing, the MacBook Airs, they can heat up for long sessions, especially like if you're gaming. Now, I really took this into consideration when I was doing this testing to see, will we still get M3 performance in a fanless machine? And thankfully, we will, because if you take a look at the wattage when we're putting a full load on these systems, the M3 uses the same exact power as the M2 because it's a three nanometer design. It is more efficient, so even though you have more performance, the power usage stays the same. So if you were worrying about the MacBook Airs throttling and you not getting much performance because of the fanless design, no, the performance should stay the same. And that is killer news. And in Cinebench 2024, the M1 and M2 are very close, but the M3 is 45% faster. And remember, this is the same amount of power usage. So if you really hammer your CPU 100% for a long time, 
that is gonna be a noticeable difference. With that said, for regular people that are web browsing and doing things like that, the M1 does fall behind in speed a little bit, then the M2 and M3 are very close. And I will say even the M1, most people are gonna be perfectly happy and fine with it. And when we tested Figma, a professional 3D web design application with this project provided to us by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California, all of these machines were fairly smooth and in the actual time it took to render these 12 high resolution layers, the difference was not that great. The M2 was fairly close. And here's the performance difference in Xcode if you do coding. So yes, the M3 is faster, but it's not a massive difference. And there's a lot of people that are coding on a 15 inch Air or even a 13 inch that are very happy with it. And also for those that do logic, well here the M1 and M2 don't have that big of a difference. The M3 does actually excel in the new Logic Benchmark 2, which you guys can look up um, everything that goes into that. But that is already a ton of tracks and even the M1 performs so much better than the older Intel MacBooks. Now for Blender rendering, this is where things get crazy because in the BMW test, we have a massive difference. The M3 is more than twice as fast than the M2, which is a little bit faster than the M1. And that's because the graphics pipeline has been really improved. We have ray tracing now with the M3, which can help in some games, although the graphics performance isn't insane here. Um, that's where we had an overhaul. So if you do Blender or 3D rendering, you wanna do it on a MacBook Air, well, you absolutely need to wait for the M3 version. Now for photo editing, this is where it gets crazy because the M1 base model actually beats out the M2 base model and then the M3 is a bit faster. Now that's because of the single NAND SSD in here uh, and the fact that it's eight gigs of RAM. I can't believe that the M1 is actually faster. Uh, and with the M3 even, it's very bottlenecked because if you upgrade to 16 gigs of RAM, you dramatically improve your speeds down to a minute and six seconds, but the M2 version, it gets a minute and 16. So it's just slightly slower if you get 16 gigs. And of course, right now you can get a great price on an upgraded one. So don't think that the performance difference is that massive. Now for video editing, if you're working with standard 4K, the difference in exporting is not there at all. And yes, this has two LUTs applied, color grading and film grain. So it's not just a regular file. There's a lot to be processed and they all handle regular 4K editing. Now, with that said, if you are somebody that works with ProRes, that's where you wanna ignore the M1 because it doesn't have ProRes encoders and it is much slower than the other two, which have very similar times. Now, I also have to add that the M1 does not have MagSafe. So that is a convenience feature, but it also opens up the other two ports for you to be able to connect other devices. And I love MagSafe. We also have a brighter, larger display. Um, the battery life is really excellent. And with that said, the M3 version of the Airs will have roughly one to two hours better real world battery life because it is more efficient when you're not doing tough tasks. So that is something to think about. But the M2 versions are already very excellent in battery life as well. And this is what brings me to kind of the conclusion. We looked at all this performance and yes, in certain cases, it absolutely matters to wait for the M3. But in a lot of cases, the difference is very small while you're saving a good amount of money and that money could go, go towards upgrading your SSD and your RAM and that value is excellent. So I will say honestly, even though we love computer upgrades and new tech coming out, New tech is always coming out. Apple's already planning two nanometer and now TSMC is talking about 1.4 nanometer or something. Um, upgrades always happen. So if you're always waiting for the next thing, you're just stuck waiting. And I think for 1,050 bucks, this M2 15 inch is incredible. Such a great value. And if you can spend a little bit more, you can upgrade it. Personally, I think for most people that are looking to get a MacBook Air that are doing regular tasks, I would not wait unless you do one of the few things where we saw a big difference. Go ahead and check out my six month review of this machine. I'll have it right over there. Click that circle above to subscribe. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.